Hey guys, real uh, quick and dirty video for you. Um, this one's about fans. Um, slightly different setup here from usual, and my desk is a bit of a mess. Um, it comes up quite frequently, not only with the Range Rover P38, but with other vehicles, that your pollen filters being blocked will cause excess current drain and they will cause problems. Um, not strictly true. Um, your fan works by spinning its blades. We have quite a large fan here. As the blades spin, the mechanical energy is transferred to the air and the air moves. Um, obviously, the th if you have a blocked fan, then there is either no air being drawn in, which people seem to think, well, the fan has to suck harder. Uh, there's a point at which it cannot draw any more air through and it will essentially spill in a vacuum. If it's spinning in a vacuum, there is no energy being imparted to the working fluid, in which case the air, and therefore less current is needed to spin the blades. The same applies to if there is nowhere for the air to go. It cannot transfer momentum. Easy enough to say this, and a lot of people, when you point this out to them on forums and things, will say, yeah, but surely if it's blocked, it's working harder. Well, no, there becomes a point where it just is spinning in a vacuum, and we know that as you get more and more of a vacuum, the friction with the air reduces and um, there are less losses in the system. So easiest thing to do, I thought, is to actually try this. This fan is not a car blower motor, it's slightly different. Uh, centrifugal uh, motor draws, uh, or centrifugal fan draws a lot more power, shifts a lot more air, although this thing is a beast as well. And the effect that you're about to see is even more exaggerated. So what you are seeing here, is the current draw and that is in um, whole amps sorry that's in yep that's in whole amps so 0 .00 0.00.00 and we're down here drawing three milliamps at the moment we're not worried about that the fan set at 4.2 volts which it will not spin at um, I'll show you this through at a lower voltage than 12 volts just to start because this is quite a noisy fan um, I do have a Range Rover blower fan, however, getting that into a situation that represents what's going on in the airbox is quite difficult, whereas obstructing this is fairly easy. Um, so what we'll do is we'll spin this up on about 5 volts. We're on bang 5 volts there. And as you can see, as it speed comes up to speed, it draws quite a bit of current. And then it will level off. So we're about 50 milliamps. And that's free flow. There's air flowing down here, through the direction of the arrow, out the front. No problem. So, the first question is, and the question that everybody asks, is, well, okay, my filters are choked. So, um, let's simulate a choked filter. Um, we have something nice and primitive to do this with here. Just make sure that's steady. So, we're about 15 milliamps, and now we're going to block our filter. But we're not closing off the airflow completely. And you can see straight away... That we've dropped the current the fan is using is dropped and if I move it closer again you'll see that it drops even further again there is no air movement now the fan is not actually doing any work other than spinning and now it's pumping fluid uh, air, it's pumping air air for the purposes of these kind of things is treated as a fluid so this is what you so if we block the output which is slightly difficult to do because the arrangement of my wires this is all thrown together in the space of about 10 minutes after a forum post. You'll see it's slightly different if we block it. While there is still air moving, it does actually rise because it's trying to compress the air. But, you know, we've now blocked, obstructed the output. And it's not really increased over what it was when it was moving there. So blocking it actually makes, possibly blocking it actually has the least effect, blocking the outflow. Blocking the inflow reduces the current. So I'm going to wind it up now to 12 volts. It's going to get loud in here. You might not hear it, and I'm going to do the same. That's 12.1 volts, 1.3 amps. So let's block the intake. Straight away, we drop. Touching the fan and open. You'll probably get a slightly different effect on blocking the outflow this time. Now 
Oh, there you go. You'll also see that as we change the speed of the fan, things happen. So as we drop the speed of the fan, the fan effectively goes almost three wheels until it reaches its operation current, and then you'll see the current come back up again. If we increase the speed of the fan, you see a massive surge, and then it comes down again. So, what can be causing this? What is actually causing these fans to fail? Well, running with a pollen filter could, in theory, block, could, in theory, have other effects. Um, you could, in theory, start to produce... Well, a fan like this, you could start to produce lift, which is going to place stress against the bearings. In the cage-type fan that's used in the Range Rover, it's mm, unlikely to happen. Um, but what's more likely is these bearings at the back of the fan are causing problems. So, as I said, what is going on? Well, one of the problem, one of the possibilities is this bearing at the back. We've done a few things on Lando at Flatlands, a few rebuilds and a few repairs, and quite often we find the back bearing has gone gummy. In the Land Rover fan, this is a big motor and it's not that easy to get to the bearings, but you can lubricate them. You can strip the motor down as well, we've done that. Um, but, from memory, most of these bearings are sintered bronze, so once they're worn, you're going to have problems. You'll also start getting the noises that sound like you've got a gerbil trapped in the dashboard. Um, at that point, it's best to replace it. The other thing is the back of the Land Rover fans, as does this, have a speed controller built in. You can't see it in here, it's in the back of the hub. In the Land Rover, it's the big um, chunk of metal that's in the back. I say Land Rover, I mean Range Rover. Um, but it's a big chunk of metal in the back of the fan. The Citroen fans are the same, the Renault fans are the same. I believe most of the Audi fans work the same. What we're doing with these units is we're not actually using um, a resistive dropper to control the speed. That's what I'm doing here. I'm varying the voltage on my power supply. Um, with these machines, we feed a special signal that's called pulse width modulation, which allows us to electronically control the speed. It's a lot more efficient. It doesn't waste the heat that a resistor pack does. Um, and it actually uses less power than the resistor pack. So again, go looking for duff resistor packs and things like that on the Range Rover and any of the vehicles with the PWM fan, you're never gonna find it. But that circuit can fail. Um, the, the Range Rover circuit is quite simple. It's just a couple of more, it's actually just, no it is, it's two MOSFETs and a little driver and that's it. The rest comes from the BECM. Those MOSFETs can become leaky, they can not turn on properly, uh, they can cause all sorts of heat related problems and they can actually fail completely leaving you with a blower that won't come on or will come on the moment you turn the ignition on or the moment the BECM, uh, the HEVAC unit commands the fans to start giving you no fan control. Um, they can be repaired, you can change the MOSFETs on them but that's a far more likely culprit for baking relays. Um, there's also a two pin connector in the kick panel in the Range Rover. Um, it's on the, in the passenger side kick panel for sure. Um, it's only recently come to light on the forums that this thing exists and fills with green crusties. You can take that off, clean that and replace it and that seems to solve a lot of problems. And then finally there's the Range Rover fuse box. We're going to do a tear down on the Range Rover fuse box and have a quick look. I'll do a video on one that's coming up. Um, but they have problems and bad joints in the fuse boxes can cause failures of the connecting points of the relays. As the resistance increases, the heat built up in the joint increases, which makes things worse. You get more oxidisation, which causes more heat build up, and then the whole thing runs away. And unfortunately, those of you who are experienced in the P38 community will be aware of the tendency of these things to catch fire. The same problem applies to many vehicles. Um, it's been seen in all sorts of vehicles, and believe it or not, it's one of the leading causes of premature death of the uh, DeLoreans. Uh, exactly the same problem. The fuse boxes catch fire because of bad contacts. But anyway, that's a really quick recap. I'm gonna go edit this now so I can get it up tonight. And um, I hope this may clear things up. 